What's happening, fam? <clears throat> LAR movement still moving. Book is entitled Lessons from a Non Custodial Father at Amazon, Kindle, and Create Space. Link will be in the description box below as usual. Go get it. PayPal link that also asked me to put it up, so I put it up. Thanks, everybody, for supporting. This video is entitled They Have Your Back, or You Have Their Back, but They Don't Have Yours. Um, there's sometimes, you know, I've got family and friends, and I can be quite dependable and reliable. And I was having this discussion with my, my mother. And my aunt and somebody else. Shit. Anyway, about, I get, you know, I know a lot. When, when you get accustomed to somebody being reliable and dependable, you are, <clears throat> you put them on a standard that they're going to always be there for you. So, you expect them to always have your back. But, that doesn't mean you're going to have their back if they need you. And... This is part of this this conversation is <clears throat> sometimes you feel like you know, sometimes you put the standard and expectation that this person is gonna be a is gonna always be a hundred with you. But because you you consider them a high quality person and they always gonna be a hundred, you giving them fifty. So you can come to them flawed. You can come to them in need. You can come to them in help. You can come to them in dire circumstances. But they can't come to you. Because when it's time to have their back, even if you feel obligated, you might not be in a position to have their back because you're so accustomed to them having yours that you never thought to put yourself, you, you never thought that you might have to make a sacrifice to have their back. And this is not about um, materialism or stuff. This is actually just more so about sacrifice. When you expect the person to to have your back, you got to understand that they're making a sacrifice. Even if they got it to give or they don't have it to give, they're making a sacrifice. And they're choosing to make a sacrifice for your betterment. But when it comes for you to, to make a sacrifice, you give them excuses. See... It's weird because a person can give you solutions and you give them excuses. A person can get it done for you, but you half-ass get it done for them. That becomes a problem. Because ultimately what winds up happening is, what you, what you got going on here is, you, 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 you know, it's a, it's a, um, it's not a defense mechanism, but it's an, it's you're laying down the expectation that you're not, as reliable and as dependable as they are, you know they're supp you, they're supposed to accept that they're going to be reliable and dependable for you, and they're also supposed to they're also ex supposed to accept that you're not going to be reliable and dependable for them. But this is supposed to be how the relationship goes. No, no, you know there if somebody. Is down for you, you got to be down in the same way. And then people say that's unrealistic. But here's what's unrealistic is you thinking that somebody could have your back, but then you half ass have theirs, but y'all going to still be cool. And you get to come back, you know, whenever these situations occur. And, I, and, and I've had these situations in my life where I have, you know, you cut people off, and I do that. Like, I cut people off. And some of the people that I've cut off get upset that I cut them off. It's not, you know, it's not to hear no or I ain't doing it or I ain't going to happen or, or we done. That's offensive, right? And what's weird about those situations is it becomes offensive because what they never take into consideration, what have you actually, what value have you brought to my life? How dependable have you been to me? How reliable have you been to me? What <clears throat> what have you done that actually made my life better, right? And <clears throat> people get their feelings hurt and indignant. Why are you go? You being petty? Like, no, I'm not really being petty. It, you know, what's petty is if I ask you what value have you brought to my life, and I've had your back when I've had your back. 
That means how did you reciprocate? A lot of people who are on the opposite side of the end didn't. And they didn't assume to. And they didn't feel like they had to because, man, you always kept it 100. You was always a buck. You was always solid. You was always there. You always did what you said you was going to do. But if I don't say what I'm going to if I don't, if I change my mind and I don't do it, I don't owe you an explanation either. But you're one of those people that don't do that. Well, see, you're one of those people that do do that. And it's the only way you're going to learn. Because maybe I didn't really do it to hurt your feelings. Maybe I did it because I changed my mind. Because I realized, you know what? I'm a sucker. I'm doing a lot for you and you ain't doing nothing for me. No more. You know? Now, also the thing about that <clears throat> that's, you know, interesting is there comes a point where you're watching a person. Because I'm an observant person. Like, I'll watch you. I just chill out. I'll watch you. Before I say anything, I'll watch you. And I've told this to people before, you know, if you need me to have your back and I do that, but I need you, to, but I know you, but I need you to have mine and you don't, so I know I can't rely on you the same way. I won't say nothing at first, but what I will watch is this. The various people who do that, they have somebody else's back. The, very, the same person that, that won't, will be unreliable to you is very reliable for somebody else. The same person that, that, that isn't completely down for you is completely down for somebody else. So the capacity to be that is there. It's just they're not going to do it for you. And for you to put that out in the public, like, yeah, you, you know, you got it in you. You just ain't got it in you for me. So we got nothing to talk about. You know, and a lot of times <clears throat> you can be, you can have somebody's back and, you, and it makes you an enabler. You know, I'm always looking out for this person. I'm al- I've always made sure they were good and well off. But guess what? Basically, I've enabled them. Because I ain't got to worry about nothing. They going to handle it. They always handle it. They always got it back. Got my back. And I, and I thought about that in a, in a movie sense where um, there are people who continue to screw up. What was that movie with the hotel? The Sterling K. Brown. Batista was in it. Like an assassins type movie. But. Um, and the brother was like. What was that boy? Paperboy from. Um. ATL, but as a brother, he, he was like he told his old the Sterling K Brown like you know you you always been strong you always been there and everybody had told him his brother was always a screw up his brother always was a screw up and he always depended on I could screw up because my brother's gonna have my back my brother's gonna fix it my brother's gonna and that drew and. Even though that was true, it drug his brother down. It never drug him down. And he never took the time to to um, take into consideration that maybe this is not a good idea. You get what I'm saying? And he never, you know, he didn't care what he drug his brother into because his brother was supposed to be Mr. Reliable, Mr. Fix-It. And when it's time to be reliable, for, for him to own up to it, you know, the brother, he would get high, you know, uh, go to escapism, run away, you know, m- make a bad situation worse by trying to duck and hide, but leaving, but basically throwing his brother under the bus that he asked, that, that he needed to fix it all. And it's kind of that same Mufasa scar type thing. So what happens when you have somebody's back, but they don't have yours? You could be cold, you can get cold, you can get mean, or you could just... You know, free, walk away, be free. And sometimes you might feel bound to a person to the point where they drug you so far down, you actually just had to let go. Or, you know, they created a situation where they let go, even though they wasn't trying to, you know. But if you're going to be um, real with somebody, if they're going to be real with you, you got to be real with them. If they're going to have your back, you got to have theirs. Um, if you don't, you know, you can't get mad when they don't want to be bothered with you anymore. And, you know, I remember doing a video pop, put it on paper. See how down you are for the people who, who, like, write all the people that you love and care about on a piece of paper and write all the things that you've done for them and write all the things that they've done for you. 
and see what kind of person you are and what kind of people and what kind of um, network you have on paper. And then it might change your perspective on who has your back and if you and how you respond to people who have your back. You know what I'm saying? So I'm done. Like, share, subscribe. Catch you on the next one. Peace.